Hello, good afternoon. Long time no see. Um, it's time for a vlog. It's been a while. Um, <clears throat> first, I'm gonna show you what I got for lunch today. I went to Choi's Oriental Market in Goleta, close to UCSB. Um, and I got their bulgogi set. Um, I think they call it, I don't know exactly what they call it, but I just call it the set because it's like, it comes with all these different sides and like your kimchi and then things that I think are like sprouts or beans, not entirely sure what they are. But this is what it looks like right now. Um, this is new. They didn't used to give you like a packet of seaweed. I, I don't know. Do they remember me? I don't go there very often. Anyway, so I'm going to open this stuff up and show you what comes in this. I set. wish you had smello vision because <laughs> it smells so good. It smells really tasty. So this is the bulgogi mixed with like vegetables and other stuff. It's not just the meat alone, the barbecued meat. And then a side of rice. Um, so this is going to be a couple meals, which is awesome. It's not like just one lunch. Um, Side of rice, some soup. I think it's miso soup. Kimchi. I don't know what these are. They look kind of like pickled cucumbers. Like it's a cucumber and with some stuff on it. This I like. I like this green stuff. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of like reminds me of cucumbers. And it's very fresh. And then they used to have these little like bean sprout things. But this is not what they used to. This isn't it. So... I like those little bean sprouts. They're really good. Why did they change it? At least this is good. This I think is okay. I love kimchi. I kind of am meh on the soup, but this is where it's at. So I'm gonna have some lunch right now. So that was pretty tasty. <laughs> the Korean food was good. I've got a bunch left over though. Anyways, I hope I don't have any food in my <laughs> food in my teeth, but I wanted to give like a I have a little catch up and particularly talk about our wedding. So when Andy and I got close to our one year anniversary of like getting engaged, which was in August, I started thinking, oh my gosh, we need to like start planning a wedding. We need to get going on this. Like we've been saving up a little bit money from each paycheck, uh, but you know, it's not like a sizable amount yet. So um, we went to the Canary, which is this beautiful hotel downtown. We went to the rooftop. We really liked that and I was I had my heart set on it we have looked at other places before like the Santa Barbara Women's Club I think that's what's called or Rockwood I think it goes by two names we went to another place called the Riviera Mansion um, once we know we can't afford the zoo that's way too expensive so we've checked out a few places plus we've we've also kind of walked around Alice Kick Park and the courthouse and we were really into the canary so we were moving forward with that uh the past few weeks uh, we've been talking to them and um trying to nail down a date which is super hard to nail down a date first we were thinking february 2020 but then we we're like no there's a higher chance of rain in february let's move it to november so we were going to do november 2019 and then we thought oh man it still might rain and i really want to have our wedding on that rooftop so let's bump it up to september 2019 um and then of course when you change the date that changes the cost as it turns out you know we don't know much about wedding planning and wedding season and all that kind of stuff but um yeah so we had been working with the canary um to have that as the venue we found a great wedding coordinator she'll do either planning or just the day of coordinating which actually involves more than just the day of it's all this other coordinating beforehand and then being there on the spot and i really liked her and um then i found a photographer actually i've been following this woman willa cavetta for over a year on instagram and i love her pictures they're bright they are fun they're crisp they just they're great they're composed well she has a really good portfolio and um, so I talked to all these vendors, I had quotes, I was getting deals left and right with people I felt, like at the Canary, they have a special promo where you can get a plated and meal and um, wine with the dinner, a house wine with the dinner, and you get a little cocktail hour for $80 a person, which I was like, yes, this amazing venue, a good price. The wedding coordinator, the cheapest she would go was 1600 which included having someone else, her assistant, work the wedding the day of, which we were gonna do. And then the photographer, um, she went down below her base price for us. Um, 
you know, I felt like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to people. They're, they're being so nice and kind and supportive and working with us. And then it just kind of fell apart last weekend. Um, we just started talking about the cost and how it's just adding up and up and up and up and it's not stopping. And we don't even know how much flowers would cost, but when I looked that up, I was baffled. So, I mean, it's incredible, like, how much people charge for wedding stuff. And I was already stressed out at that point, like, stressed out at work, but that's the norm for me. Um, just all day, every day, so much happening. I have very busy work days, and I felt like I didn't have time to do this wedding stuff, and it's hard, and I want to I wanna do it, but I can only really focus my energy on it on the weekends. Um... So I was already pretty stressed out about trying to do any planning um, and then and then the cost of it and everything and we just decided to scrap that. We had um, contracts but we didn't sign anything, we didn't make any deposits. Um, it was really having those three contracts that really spurred us to be like, oh my god, this is just, it's going to get nuts. Um, and just to decide, you know, what's really important to us. Um, which is we don't want to enter our marriage in a bunch of debt from a wedding and to think what is really important here? What is our goal? Our goal is to get married and to commit ourselves to each other and to our relationship and to a marriage. <laughs> Ooh, it's kind of scary. <laughs> I feel like I'm not old enough to get married. Even though like my peers are married and have kids, I kind of feel like on the inside I'm only 16. Not 33. Anyways, um, so yeah, we're going a different route. We're just going to keep saving up cash. Whatever cash we have at this point next year is our budget. Like, that's it. And we, we know how much we'll set aside. So we're just going to have something very, very small. We don't know the date. We don't know what it's going to be. Is it going to be at the courthouse? Is it going to be at a beach? I don't know. Like... It, it was really difficult actually to like to make that decision and to have that change in direction it's the right choice but it's difficult you know and that's part of I think being a responsible grown-up is thinking about your finances and thinking about the future and retirement you know um, and do we want to go into all this debt which we don't we want to be smart and save and do things affordably so so that's the wedding update <laughs> for now. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing and when we're doing it or where it's going to be at. So, so uh, that's that for now. Hi, boys. Don't mind my <laughs> bedspread. Little sleepy fig. And Stitchy Boos. Hey, Stitch. Stitch had his birthday somewhat recently. He turned five years old. You did. At the end of August, you turned five years old, Stitch. Big yawn. And the boys had their vet visit, their annual vet visit. They had their exam and their shots. There you are. There's your face. Take my babies. My kitties. I have a few items I wanted to share with you. Some eyeshadow purchases. When I get kind of stressed out, meaning stressed out with work, stressed out with the wedding stuff, stressed out about upcoming trips that I'm nervous and scared about, all the transitions going on at work, a new payroll system, a new financial shadow system, holy guacamoles, you want to believe it. Anyways, um, I end up shopping sometimes <laughs> and buying little things that like make me happy. So that's what um, I've done recently. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's what I do. Like, if I'm stressed out, I'm like, oh my gosh, sometimes, like, I want to buy something or eat a snack, you know? Those are my vices. Um, so I got the Charlotte Tilbury Stars in Your Eyes palette, which just came out this week. I'm still new to Charlotte Tilbury. I'm not too familiar with her line. I know she has these YouTube videos and this accent, and she always says, darling, oh darling, whatever. Um, it's very cute and um yeah i really wanted this palette stars in your eyes it is so pretty uh, let me it, it comes with these little basically four quads where you have different looks that are all set up um 
hang on, you can see the bed spread in the reflection. Anyways, um, they're very, very pretty colors. Now you can see the cat pictures in the reflection. This is why I could never be a beauty blogger vlogger because I'm not with it. Like, you're getting reflections left and right. You can see the cats. You see little Stitch. Can you see Fig? He's over there too. You can't see him. Oh my god, like how do you do this stuff? Anyways, um, <laughs> so there's four little sets or four little trios of eyeshadows and you can go with her look you know what I mean? And do those colors and those sets. Or you can like dab around and do whatever you want. So they're beautiful. They're somewhat neutral colors. There's also some pinks. I feel like everyone is doing like pink and red palettes right now for eyes. And it's really fun. You know, you got the Urban Decay Cherry coming out. I feel like the Norvina palette from Anastasia is a little bit reddish and pink. It's just something you keep seeing and it's kind of cool. So anyways, um, I really like this palette and it's also somewhat easy to wear. I feel like everything Charlotte Tilbury comes out with, you can just wear to work and it looks pretty and appropriate. It's nothing over the top in contrast with boo boo boo, Pat McGrath. <laughs> She has amazing stuff, but holy smokes, like some of it is not easy to wear to work, you know? I guess you just have to pick the neutrals, but I feel like Pat McGrath kind of goes like bright and bold and really fun and, you know, she tends to have more of those looks going on. Um, so it's a little bit harder to find or to make it office appropriate, uh, depending upon how uh, conservative your office is. So this is my first purchase from Pat McGrath. I actually had a $100 gift card, so I only paid 25 bucks for this because normally it's $125, which is insane. So expensive. Um, yeah, I was really excited. So this is the Pat McGrath Mothership 5. The Mothership is like what she calls the big eyeshadow palettes, and then there's one through five. But number four was limited edition, and you can't get it anymore, but I really want it. So this is the number five. And it's... It's like very substantial. I had to have Andy hold it. I was like, can you believe how freaking heavy this is? Like this, it's like a sandwich. It's like a really heavy sandwich. Anyways, um, and it's just very luxurious. Like so much detail and beauty and thought put into it. And then you've got your nice mirror and these colors, which are amazing. I did wear some to work the other day. <laughs> It was actually maybe not the best day to wear a bright color to work because I ended up going to these meetings. I went to a staff assembly meeting with different people on campus who are involved with staff issues. I went to an administrative management professionals with all the business officers on campus and in academic units. So I was like meeting people left and right with some bright, crazy eyeshadow. I wore this eyeshadow for the day that I met all these new contacts. <laughs> Anyways, um, I did use, I had a transition shade. I used that one, I think, like, all over the lid, like, the bottom eyelid, a little bit in the crease. And then I did this color, and I used my Max Fix Plus to make it wet. And it was just so bright and so bold. It was amazing. I loved it. Um, so I haven't played with all the other colors, but they are so shimmery and glittery and I love that. So you've got your more neutrally colors, some of these browns and stuff, uses like your transition or base and then the bright pops of color. So anyways, um, I still wanna play around with this a whole bunch and I just find that for me when I wear makeup in the morning and I do something fun and new, it makes me happy and I do it for me, right? I don't do it just so I look presentable at work when I'm playing with new things. It's just, it's me and it's exploring and trying new combinations and new colors and stuff and it just makes me happy. So I've been playing with makeup more recently and purchasing more of it. Um, <laughs> Cause normally I try to like control myself a little bit there. But yeah, those are some of the highlights of my new purchases recently. And um, if you've tried Pat McGrath, let me know what you think. I'm curious about the other Mothership palettes, although I'm not buying anything right now because they're so pricey. Um, yeah, the Pat McGrath or um, anything from Charlotte Tilbury. What do you like from those lines? What do you recommend trying out? Slinkies, chowing down. Yes, it's dinner time. 
It's dinner time. He's got his slow feeder so he doesn't eat too much. And it's elevated too. Yeah, your slow feeder. Huh. He's a happy boy when he eats. <laughs> his tail's going. Uh, sometimes I look back at this picture from my birthday party in the backyard and I look how thin Slinky was there. He's a slinky dink. You can see his ribs. Yeah. And that was in May. We already had him for over a month then because we got him March 20th. And this was actually May 15th was the day of the birthday party because it got pushed back. Yeah. So after two months, that was after he had gained weight with us. And now he's very, very healthy. Right, so you got to see Slinky because you saw the cats earlier. So everyone's doing well. And that's it. So thanks so much for joining in and see you later. Sure, of my birthday party at... Sorry. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it.